Good day, viewers. I'm truly happy you could have taken the time out to join us in this and another series of our live sessions. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our various platforms. I'm your host, Dane Parker, and today we'll be talking about tomato production. More particularly, we'll be looking at our own deli tomato. I do trust that you are keeping safe and following the COVID-19 protocols as we continue to lower the numbers. Now, as we dissect tomato production, I do ask that you, of course, participate in sending in your questions and, of course, paying keen attention as the end of the session, one or two participants will walk away with a prize courtesy of Akim Plant. So let's get into the subject matter. Now, we, of course, at Akim Plant have brought in various seed types. Now, the view, of course, is to provide our farmers with the high quality hybrid varieties that, of course, are tolerant to our tropical conditions and, of course, are capable of responding to, of course, climate change. And so with this in mind, Delhi was brought into the equation. Now, you might be asking, is there such a, a tomato? Yes, it is, because it's one of our two principles that we would have brought this tomato variety from. And this is, of course, Namdari. There are several other seeds that are in the Namdari line, but today we are focusing on Delhi. Now, Delhi is a plummy type tomato, of course, that would have been introduced to Jamaica since 2017. It's commercially sold in a 10 gram size pack, which contains approximately 4,800 seeds. Now, the idea, of course, is to provide our farmers with good quality seedling material and good quality planting material that can withstand, again, as I said, our local conditions. Now, the cultivar in particular, the, the fruit shape is oval. It, the, the, from time to time, you might get from 120 to 150 grams in fruit size, somewhere about a little bit under um, a quarter of a pound or less. And of course, you get a multi-level fruit set. Usually, each cluster is ranging from about seven to nine, sometimes even 10 fruits that are, of course, within that fruit shape. It is, of course, suited for your fresh market. I've seen persons use it for, like, you know, making purees and ketchups. So, of course, it can be utilized. Of course, it stores very well. So, it's a hard nature tomato, but you can't even tell because when you slice into that and to use it for your various dishes and meals, you won't even recognize this. And, of course, it's a very vigorous and high yielding tomato. As you can see from the images that I'm presenting. Additionally, it's suited for both our hot and cold weather conditions. The more you expose it to these harsh environments, the better the tomato thrives. And of course, you back that up with the fact that it has Gemini virus and bacteria will tolerance built into the cultivar. Now, as I said earlier, you get several fruits you know, I've counted up to 204 fruit per plant. So this is a very big, bushy plant that contains several layers of fruit. And you'll get production continuing for up to even three months, as reported by one of our farmers. Now, it can be used or can be grown both in an open field as well as in an indoor situation. So depending on the nature of what you prefer, and what you would want to be doing, this tomato is adaptable. Now, separate and apart from high performance, if you look at this slide that is coming up next, this is one cluster um, of tomato, almost two pounds and beyond in some instances. There are several fruits and the sizes are uniform and pretty much large. But I wouldn't want you to take it sol solely from me. I'd want you to also hear from the farmers who have been growing this tomato and have experienced the deli effect, so to speak. So sit back in your seats as we take you on a virtual road trip right across Jamaica to hear from what our farmers are saying in this presentation. My name is Karen Powell. I'm a farmer from Comapen, St. Elizabeth. 
I plant deli. Reason being why I plant deli because when I plant it, it's very fruitful. I get a lot of fruits. The sizes are large. When they ripe, they ripe red. They they can travel far. Another reason why I love to plant deli is because they can stand to any form of weather. And I will encourage every farmer to try and plant deli because it's a very fruitful fruit or vegetable. Hi, my name is Devon Stone, farmer from Gyalan, St. James. Um, I plant deli tomatoes. Why I plant it? Because it gives me more resistant in the drought and it gives me a lot of fruits hard good quality um fruit i'm a small farmer jerome gunzel seven gong kelly Clarendon. Yeah, yeah my experience with the daily tomato was really good and beer good a lot of tomatoes yes man good good good, good variety of tomato uh, to all the other farmers them out there um I'm a farmer in Rodenal, Clarendon, and I've been planting um, deli tomato. And the thing that I like about um, deli tomato is that uh, when it comes on to process, you have a nice process in which you get up to 12 um, tomato per cluster. And I've been planting um, deli tomato, and I realized that with, all, with, the, with the other varieties, I don't really get such... Um, quality. I recommend all the farmers out there to plant deli tomato because what I realize the nature of the, 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 this variety is that it withstand the, the, the weather condition when it come on like to rain and all that you get a, a bit a longer lasting when it come on to the tree. My name is Laverne Reed, farmer from Alligator Pond, so Manchester. Yeah, I am a tomato farmer. I plant tomatoes and over the years my brand, my selection of tomato is deli tomato. No other. The yield is tremendous. The bearing tremendous. Delhi is number one. Right. Hello farmers. Um, uh, we are in uh, the plot of deli tomatoes right here. Delhi is a very good um, plummy tomato to plant. If you notice, these are just four weeks um, without any irrigation. Um, it's fertilized one time with some fertile water and we just start to refart them. Delhi really is a good um, plummy tomato for any small farmer to plant because it gives you rapid growth and early start to flower early um three weeks and you start to see flowering if you notice here three weeks and you start to have flowering and it is this tomato should be the best choice for any farmer right now if you want to make money out of tomato right now Delhi is the way to go, and you can you can try it, and I know you will never never lose. Um, my experience in Delhi already, I have harvested over 15 pounds of a one tree that was grown up over a three-year period. I'm Glenford Anderson, and the way to go is Delhi. Now, there you have it, farmers and viewers. Now, of course, I'm sure you might be wondering at this time, where can I get these seeds to purchase? And for those who are viewing and have joined us, might I just ask you to just type in your comments where you're from and if you've had this experience with growing daily and do share in the chat 
And of course, I will ensure to read those messages and of course share with our viewers. Now, just to recap what our farmers are actually saying, the plants are drought tolerant, whether it be or they can withstand the harsh in climatic conditions. So whether it is you're having heavy rains or you're having some seasonal drought, the plants can withstand. Secondly, you're getting multiple fruit set. You're also getting a large number of clusters of tomatoes on the plants themselves. So the plants are big and robust and bushy. And at the same time, you're getting multi-level fruit set. And of course, you would have seen in instances where other cultivars are planted and they get this nice bushy plant, but the fruit set is relatively low. So you're getting a nice compact plant, but the plant is more generative than it is vegetative. And of course, the nature of the tomato in terms of market quality can't be beaten. It is second, of course, to none. Now, as we go further in the program, I want for you to also bear in mind that we can, you can use the Alchem plant program to grow this crop. And of course, the objective of which is to provide you with your optimum yield while keeping your input cost at a minimal level. So you want to be making money at the end of it all. Now, of course, the focus will be on, on your land clearance and your preparation, how to grow your seedlings. That's the conversation. And at the same time, your crop nutrition. And finally, your pest and disease management. Because, of course, without this, you cannot move into the productive life of the crop as you would want it. So your land prep, of course, begins with your clearing with your glyphos max or your scotch. In some instances, some persons you will install or you probably already have your drip irrigation installed. This, of course, can be utilized and is of course readily um, available here. Should you not have um, drip irrigation set up, we do supply drip tapes here at Alchem Plant so we can have that conversation. So you burn down your land, you prepare accordingly, and you move in with your planting materials. Now, your nursery operation, of course, will be critical. And of course, you can, of course, go back to one of our programs where we, you know, dev, dealt mainly with how to do nurseries in Jamaica. Now, your Bio 20 and your Acrobat plays a significant role here, as well as Cytoplex and Solugro. Now, the idea here is to set into motion a very healthy and robust plant because a healthy start is exactly what you need to be getting up with. But the Bio 20 provides you with that. Fortify also gives the plants the resilience in terms of thicker stems, bigger leaves, and the ability to withstand environmental stresses and at the same time be in a position where they are building the plants in unity. And of course, the use of Acrobat or carbonism in this instance is to prevent any amount of damping off from occurring. And of course, wherever you are, you can use our TH grow mix to fill your germination trees and to plant accordingly. Now, at or just as about you're about to transplant your seedlings, you can do what is called the kickstart or your transplant drench. Again, the goal of which is to build the plant's capacity by adding your, your cytoplex and your solid growth. So you want faster root growth and at the same time, quicker take off in terms of the size and girth of your plant stem. Additionally, the use of caprid here is to prevent any insects from attacking that young seedling in that stage. Now, as you go into your nursery program, you want to be providing that plant with excellent root mass you know, you're, you should be able to reduce the transplant stress and, of course, help the plant to better utilize the nutrients that are going to be placed at the root zone. We've seen in instances where you transplant and the seedlings are literally almost you say, stuck, not growing. It's just stunted and in one place. So when you use the Kickstart program, that's what you'll get from it, even with the inclusion. Now, of course, we could not be just saying this without proving the efficacy of these products. So here we have a farmer having used Bio 20 on the right of the screen and the control plot as indeed labeled. And you'll notice the height of the plant and the leaf area 
and that's what buy 20 does if you were to look at the root mass you'll see a nice big root mass which are white and clean which are also suggesting that this plant once it hits the soil it will be moving accordingly and of course you use buy 20 at a rate of one tablespoon per gallon and this can be used you know from the two leaf stage right on to the point where you're prepared to have to, um, to transplant into the field and even further into the vegetative state. Now, once you've transplanted your crop, your next step, of course, is to provide your plant with the requisite nutrition program or programs that will give the plant the kind of boost or growth and development, as I was mentioning earlier. No, I mentioned to you earlier in terms of the kickstart program, which includes your Pologizer Ultra, a suitable um, fungicide, whether it be a carbenism or your Acrobat. And this, of course, gives the plant that protection at the root zone and rapid movement in terms of growth and development. And so, whether it be your solid grow, which is your 124088, or your root max, your 105010, these products are so designed to help the plant with that quick root initiation and optimum takeoff time. So there's no lag or slowdown in the plant growth and development. Again, once you go into the various stages on growth and development, you want to be adding to that now your, your nutrition program, whether it be from your omics or your melaline. And so here we have your Nutrient Express, your Cytokine, and your Green Stem. Now, the purpose of this three product that I just mentioned to you is to provide the plant with a reduced stress conditions. So that's a function of your Green Stem. The role of Cytokine here comes into play because it helps the plant to push out new roots or develop new roots, and at the same time, give you an excellent growth in terms of vertically. And of course, as I mentioned to you in our previous, you don't want to be providing the plant with biostimulants and not putting on or adding to those mixtures nutrients because what you'll eventually do is also to stress the plant even further. And so that's the reason we apply Nutrient Express. It contains your proteins and your amino acids, seaweed extract, as well as carbohydrates that are going to be used by the plant to grow and develop. Additionally, of course, we look at the role of the cytoplex as a plant hormone, along with your green stem as an anti-stress to give you root development as well as lateral branching. Now, of course, we took to the field to say, how does this program actually work? And so what you're seeing here in these pictures to the left of my screen are the treated plants. As I said to you earlier, once you would have applied these products, you're going to be seeing the plant's response. Note, of course, that the farmer would have also started to stake the treated plants. While on the right-hand side, those plants are still a little bit behind, be, behind and, and not even the stakes are installed. So what you're getting is quick growth, rapid uptake of nutrients, and a uniform development in your crop. Now, of course, which farmer wouldn't want that? To be, to be going on. So once you've planted out, those are your next steps to apply your foliar, your biostimulants and your nutrition program. Now, just a little bit close up on the plants themselves. And you can see the major difference. You have bright yellow open blossoms ready to be pollinated. Whereas on the control plot, what you're having are smaller plants with fewer blossoms. So what you'll end up having is a situation where the once you've introduced your Miller program, your cytokine, your green semi, your nutrient express, what you'll get is this rapid movement of the plant. And so you'll get the bright open blossoms, which of course will translate into early fruit set. And once you have early fruit set, then the next phase, of course, is to go into the, the next level. So as I said to you earlier, what you'll be getting now is multi-level fruit set. So your harvest is over a longer period of time. Now, once you introduce these hormones and these biostimulants, what you also signal to the plant 
is that you are lessening the stress, so you prevent blossom abortion. So all of these issues are prevented once you go in the early stage of the growth and development of the plant. As you can see in the control, the plants are a bit smaller or much smaller. The leaf area is also smaller, which is also telling you that you have what? Less photosynthesis occurring, which means that the plants are not as vigorous and robust as you would expect. Now, further into the program, once you again transplant it, you can go into your Omex line, which is your Bio 20, your Fortify, and your Calmax B. Again, the role of these products cannot be overemphasized. In terms of Bio 20, it's a complete liquid formulation that is highly concentrated with not just 2020, as with some products, but you, it's also fully chelated with trace elements, and it also has seaweed extract. Now, the benefit of this is now the, what we call the trifecta. The nutrition, along with the micro elements and your seaweed extract, provides a complete package of nutrition. Your auxins, your cytokinins, your amino acids, and your micronutrients and your macronutrients all come into play to provide your plants with our thicker stems, bigger leaves, so you can move into the next phase of growth faster and quicker. And if uh, the plant is healthier, then what it also means is that it can withstand the stress conditions, disease conditions, as well as your insect pests. So it won't be coming down with your different viruses or any other issues so easily or readily. In that line of product, as I mentioned to you earlier, is your Omex Fortify. And as the word Fortify suggests, it builds, it encloses, it allows for the plant to be resilient or stronger as you grow and develop this plant. It contains both phosphate as well as phosphide, so you're getting a double action. So when you apply this product, even with your fungicide, what you do is to extend the benefits of the fungicide program because it allows a better what you call translocation or movement throughout the plant system. And not just that, you're talking about better health in terms of growth and development. In the vegetative state or between week one to three, what we normally do is to combine both your Bio 20 and your Calmax B and we apply it in one week. And then the following week, we go with our cytokine and our green stem and nutrient express. And so you're building the plant block by block, but what you're getting is bigger leaves, more vigorous plants, which is going to translate now into a higher return at the end. Add it to that now in your productive phase. And note carefully that these products are used throughout the growing period of the plant. So once you acquire them, it's not something that you're going to be going back again to say, I need to change this or change that. The Fortify and your Calmax B fits into the productive phase of your plant. So once you've started fruit set, and once you've started the development of your crop, your Fortify and your Calmax B comes and plays a critical role. And this role, of course, is, of course, in maintaining your fruit set. And once you're maintaining your fruit set, you're also going to be maintaining size and weight and, of course, the marketability. Now, for Calmax B, it's both calcium and boron in combination. The boron basically acts like a wheelbarrow in carrying the calcium throughout the plant tissue. Now, it not just come with calcium and boron. There are other elements like magnesium and a little bit of nitrogen. You have micronutrients that are also built into this product. Now, when you pick up a liter of Calmax B, what you're really picking up is almost three pounds of nutrient in a soluble concentrate. And once you apply, the plant doesn't need to do anything more than to absorb because it's in a ready state that the plant can be utilized. And the boron to calcium ratio is such that you prevent issues like what you're going to be seeing next. And these include, of course, your fruit cracking, your blossom in rot, which of course can be very much avoided, but should you find the need that, that this is occurring, what you probably need to do, this action is no longer reversible. You're going to have to just remove those fruits and then start to apply these products, and then the issues will be solved. 
So once it's a nutritional issues like this, then your Calmax D and your Fortify can be used. Now, that, of course, wraps up the foliar program. To add to this, you will put your insecticides and your fungicides, as we will discuss further. Now, to continue with nutrition, we're going to be looking at the fertilizer blends that we carry at Alchem Plant. And, of course, we consider the farmers not just pocket, but the benefits to be derived from using these products. And what am I getting at, really? The programs are so designed that the complete nutrition is taken into consideration. A healthier plant in all stages of the crop development simply means better returns and better money and more money in your pocket. Now, we have the elixir blends. We also have your agosol lines of soluble fertilizers and we have the abodam line. So there are three blends that you can use. So if you have drip irrigation, you're thinking agosol. If you have a granular setup that you're going to be putting the nutrients at the root zone, then what you're looking at now is either your elixir blend or your abodom line of fertilizer. But before we even dig into this further, the goal of your nutrition program and any nutrition program is to provide the right nutrient to give the plant the right amount of growth throughout the growing period. And so looking at this, this growth curve, of course, indicates the same, that the purple line there being your phosphorus is critical. Sorry, your, yes, purple it is, is critical at the lower levels of your crop development. And as you go further, you realize that your potassium levels are going to be critical in the other side, which is your productive side. Now, the reason for that is that nitrogen and phosphorus are going to play a crucial relationship in setting the plant up for growth. So, and so what we have here at Alchem is your 14-28-14 or your 11-22-22 blend that can be applied at this stage. We normally say to all farmers, you can go with your 14-28-14 because this provides enough phosphorus for that excellent root development. And as you go into the crop, you can switch over into a, like a 15-5-35 or a 11-22-22 blend. And this, of course, comes in the Agasol, sorry, your Abodam line of fertilizer blends. Again, the rate of application varies depending on the setup that you have. Anywhere from 250 to 300 or 400 pounds of fertilizer is needed to do an acre of land and again as the plant develops the nutrient demand becomes increasingly more and so you feed accordingly now if you are doing fertigation then you will turn to your agosol line to add to this we also supply calcium nitrate as well as magnesium sulfate potassium thiosulfate as well as a product called nutrihold and the benefit of this, as once you speak to your agronomist, they will design a program that can be utilized based on your climatic condition and your soil type and the crop needs as you get the relevant development. So anywhere from planting to flowering, we recommend that you go with your 15, 35, 15. And as the plant goes into the vegetative state, we have a 2020 blend of agosol line. And as it goes into your fruit set, we also have a 91836 and a 104010. So once you're going into your harvesting stage, the 104010 now becomes even more critical. And as I mentioned to you earlier, you can speak to your agronomist and they will provide you with a tailored approach as to how to do this. Now, to manage weeds in your crop, we of course, supply Carzone as well as nabo -S. And this, of course, is a selective herbicide that can be used throughout the growth period and throughout the plot without harming the plants themselves. Now, if you're doing a multiple crop type of setup, then, of course, your care must be taken in spraying your Carzone through the other crop areas, whereas the nabo -S will kill your grasses only, the car zone will take down 
all other weed species throughout the plot. So if you're planting sweet pepper and tomato, I tell you the truth, those peppers are going to be coming down if you should spray or if the car zone should come in contact with them. And so you manage accordingly. Now your car zone is, of course, one teaspoon or up to seven grams per gallon of water. And your nabo S, two tablespoons per gallon. And you mix accordingly and you can spray throughout the crop. Now, as we continue the conversation, pests and diseases are best prevented. Now, once your program is so designed, it is best to keep them out rather than to try to control them. And the best way to do so is to ensure that the number of plants per year or your planting density is maintained. And at the same time, you're feeding the kind of um, fertilizers that the crop needs. Again, even if you're putting on excess nitrogen, this can allow the plant tissues to be soft. And if you have soft plant tissues, then what it means is that they are more Ex the, the, the fungal part of the fungus can damage them even more and so you avoid excess nitrogen ensure that you're using clean and pest or disease free planting material so you don't want to be taking an infected planting material into the field and of course you monitor your crop um, by scouting and going through your field and ensuring that you are keeping abreast as to what is happening there now for your various Fungal pathogens, we normally recommend um, a wide range of products here. We have your bellies, your sulcox, topsin, acrobat. Those products can be utilized throughout the crop cycle and the crop life. Now, depending on the nature and the situation you have, then you might need to do a cocktail mixture and to step in, in even more aggressively. Now, some of the major disease issues are your early blight. And this, of course, can become very, you can knock down your plant in a very quick time. So again, that's the reason why scouting becomes so critical. Now, in addition to that, you also need to remember that your weekly program in terms of your spray cycles must account for some of these issues that will show. So depending on your climatic condition, the weather that is taking place, you need to adjust accordingly. Right, farmers? Good. So if you're seeing early blight situation, then your bellies comes into play critically here. It's both a double systemic action. So what you're going to be getting in is antisporulant, meaning that the spores won't spread, and it will lock down the disease in a very quick time. Now, if you need help in identifying whether you are seeing early blight, here is a picture on your screen. Now, note that the disease shows up not because this is early blight, but it shows up in the latter part of the crop life, right? So you'll see the lesions on the plant leaves, and this can spread rapidly. Now, how do you know if it's going to be spreading to your field quickly? If the conditions are humid, say you just got some rainfall, and then a little bit of sun, and you get some night showers, those conditions can allow for the quick spread of this disease. And so you monitor accordingly. Now, Again, you can do is to adjust your spray cycle. So if you have an eight-day or a nine-day spray cycle, what you do is to bring it up closer once you see this problem in your field so you can control and suppress very quickly. And of course, as I said to you earlier, bellies can take care of this once you've stepped in adequately and do accordingly. Again, just want to show you a visual here in terms of the difference now between your early blight and your late blight. If you notice on the early blight, there's a yellowing around the lesion itself or the area on the plant leaf. Whereas the late blight, there's a sort of a water soaked area around it. So, easy, easy way to differentiate. And as you'll see in the next slide, see the picture that I'm holding? So, the area right around the leaf appears water soaked. And of course, there are some small, they describe like fuzz. You see the actual mycelium on the leaf surface that's why it appears slightly whitish or looking powderish and so you move in with your acrobat your zampro your bellies or your carbendazim for quick knockdown and control of this issue further 
to this conversation, just want to point out the benefits of using some of these chemistries. And so in the case of Zambro, it's a systemic fungicide, both preventative and curative. Now, not because it has both means that you're going to leave up the field, right? But you want to monitor and control accordingly. And of course, it can be utilized, especially in your rainy conditions. It's a very low toxicity. And of course, it's environmentally friendly. The Acrobat. Now, two in one again. You'll be getting both systemic and contact. And I'd love for one of my participants to just type in the chat. What's the difference between a systemic and a contact fungicide? Anyone? Just type in and let me know. And then I will share, of course, in a short while. So the benefit, again, is that it, is, it has what you call antisporulant effect, meaning that it doesn't allow for spread. It locks down the fungus and prevents spreading from occurring. Again, it has very low phytotoxicity, so you can mix it with other chemistries and don't have to worry that, oh, I mix this and that with it. It's very good like that. There is no adverse effect on your beneficial insect. I see Georgia responding on the laptop to the question. Anybody I typed this in as yet? Okay. I'll just follow up that in a short while again. So the there are no adverse effects to your beneficial insects as are other organisms, whether it be your butterfly or your bees in the environment itself. Now in the case of another chemistry which is toxin, this product now helps it's a broad spectrum very systemic and again both preventative and curative action and it has very good rain fast now just to highlight if the chemistry is a contact then good coverage is needed well in in, in all cases the chemistry needs to be applied effectively but if it's a contact, then what you need to be doing is to ensure that the plants are covered effectively so you can have the target organism, be it a fungus or an insect, be um, not done. I see um, Ms. Robinson with the response of a farmer. Go okay, ahead. so on YouTube, we have Leroy Wilson. Yes. That says, systemic, the plant absorb while the contacts it's on the plant. Okay. So, so Leroy Wilson, um, where is he from? Did he say? Town. Okay, Leroy from Spanish Town. Now, the, you're, 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 you're all, you're, you're very warm. Let me just put it that way. There's another farm. So, Junior Johnson on YouTube, contact require to contact the target species and system it go into the system of the plant. Well, there you go. That's a bright student. So both answers very much coming together to give you the excellent response. So if it's systemic, then it has it goes into the plant system. And once the organism lands or pitches or, or starts to suck or chew, then it will come in contact with the chemistry. Whereas if it's contact, then when you're applying it, you need to ensure that you get good coverage so that the target organism is controlled accordingly. So thank you for your response. And of course, we welcome your participation in this hour session. So there you have it in terms of the strategy going forward, in terms of managing your disease conditions. Now, again, I cannot overemphasize the need to scout, meaning walk through your field. Hmm? Don't just go there to pick it and don't just go there to plant it. Or just don't just say you're going to spray. I want for us to change that attitude. Go into that field, identify some of the conditions that are there. And if you're not certain how to, again, we have our WhatsApp numbers that you can send the images to. You have the, our agronomists that are in the field that you can share this information with or request a visit. And if you don't, then I'll give you one of the numbers now, which is 7570022. You can reach out to us, and then our able receptionist will attach you to the respective agronomists so you can get the kind of answers that you need, so you can move in with the sort of 
adequate level of knowledge in terms of doing what you're doing. We want the best for you now. And so be it insect, be it a pest or a disease, we want you to ensure that when you step into that field, you know, you're stepping in like a boss and doing what needs to be done in terms of bringing down the population levels and securing that future investment, which is your crop yields. Now, for your white flies, and of course, may I just say to you that we did not delve deeply into insect pest management because, of course, on our platform, we would have done a similar program which, to, which speaks to, of course, your insect pest management. So in your YouTube, you just type in Alchem Plan, and you can do whether space or hyphen, just put in insect pest, and then you'll see that training session come up where you can go back into that and review a call. Um, Georgia has another response from another farmer. Oh, go ahead. farmer is asking you to repeat the numbers slowly. Okay, I'm, I'm set. 757-0022. And that's our switchboard. So once you... 757-0022. And so Georgia will also share in the chat the number just the same so you can have it and you can call accordingly. Now, you can, of course, just indicate where you're from and the kind of assistance you need so the representative will know how to direct your call. And, of course, someone will respond to you in a timely manner. Now, I'm sure you're wondering to yourself, with all of these products being brought to bear, what are the numbers like? Can you really farm tomatoes successfully in Jamaica? And I'm wondering, with all the expenditure and, and the, the inputs that are needed to grow a successful crop, is it actually possible to bring to market and make back what you've invested and, of course, see some return on your money? And I see those in studio here with me nodding them head and smiling. So I suspect that somebody here must have planted some tomato at some point or the other. Now, the answer to that question is in our next slide. But before I even skip to it, I say to you that it's possible with Alchem Plant. Because what we do is to guide you through the process. We can do everything except even point it to the market. But at the same time, we might be able to connect with somebody, maybe, not sure, that might be in a position to provide you with some help. But let's see what the cost-benefit analysis really speaks to in terms of growing an acre of tomato. So we can scale it in either way, either more or take it right down to a very small plot, even around the backyard. Now, in growing Delhi in particular, we look at a labor cost of $160,000. And this really is to, to do several things, maybe to spray to transplant, to assist with harvesting. And we did a rough calculation because basically now it's $2,500 per Monday. And so this covers um, 64 days of labor input, be it the spray application or your transplanting or even assisting with harvesting. Now, the overall input includes your, your fertilizers, your different biostimulants, and, you spray. and remember, too, that these numbers will vary. It can go down. And again, the best farmer looks at ways of doing cost-saving measures and getting out maximum return. Isn't that so? I'm sure you agree. Additionally, your land preparation comes into play. Of course, this might be whether you're doing check holes or you're doing plow. So depending on where you are, again, this might be plus or minus um, another increment or maybe another 10% or maybe lower than a 10% increment here. And so we put this all together and we came up with $407,000 as your total expenditure. Again, it also assumes that you did not install or you had irrigation so, or you're depending upon rainfall or something to that effect. Now, in growing Delhi, what we look at from an acre of tomato, you can put the entire pack can plant an acre, which is so one pack is your investment. Or in some instances, some persons, they do, they do a higher density. So they do like a two by five or a two by six. 
And, and so what they get are more plants and they allow the plants to spread wider and get bushier and larger. And so we're looking at an average. And this, of course, I must say to you farmers, is a conservative yield. This is over a nine-week period of harvest, basically two months and change. We've had farmers that have harvested for up to four months from daily tomato. You would have heard in your video clip that one, one farmer had the tomato plant there and it went down and it came back up and it went down and it came back up. So he had it for over a year to grow in there. And so we also looked at a nominal rate of $20 per pound. And that's, that's, the, that's the ceiling. It already was at least $10 a pound, I know that for a fact. But we looked at it. At, and so what we looked at also are the different, your ability to move the commodity, so to speak. With relative so in using the lowest output, we are looking at approximately 45,000 pounds of tomato over a nine-week period from one acre of land. And if you're able to sell it at $20, you're getting a gross of $910,000. When you take out your expenditure, you're left with a net of $503,000. Again, we've had farmers who would have quadrupled this by planting daily. You tell you that in, in picking for four months and the plants are doing exceptionally well and they would have seen more than sufficient. But at $50 per pound, you're looking at a net take-home of $1.8 million if you can market this tomato. Um, I have a farmer in Alston who planted, just now, 2,000 plants, and his first harvest was 2,500 pounds. And that is not including what he gave away and shared with him neighbor. That's what just went to market. And he's reporting to have at least another eight or nine harvests left on those plants. Now, the worst case, him can only pick five. You're talking about 2,500 pounds multiplied by another five reapings. Good? At base price, another $20 per pound. Lowest there is. The numbers can play out. And he'll tell you that, so Park, I didn't get to tie up the plants, I didn't get to grass it, I didn't get to do so many other things, and they are bearing profusely. So that is the advantage, of course, in using our crop care program, and even planting daily in question. The crop can give you that high return that you'll see. So at this time, I will welcome your comments and your questions at this time. So if there are any questions at this time, feel free to type them in the chat room and ask Georgia to read. Mr. Robbins to read for us. Um, All right. So Kirk Williams on YouTube. Yes. Do you have a greenhouse indeterminate variety? Uh, Sir Williams, we would have loved to have had one. Not at this time, but I'm sure we are, of course, looking at an option that can be used. But Delhi, if you can market it, can be grown in your greenhouses and you can extend the crop life by putting it under protection. So it's not indeterminate, but what you'll do is you carry multiple stems. So you'll get the market yield from it in that way. Okay. I hope Gil that answers your question, Sir Williams. Gilmore Dixon on YouTube, what is the recommended planting space distance? All right, so in some cases, if you're on a slope, or if you plan to trellis the plant, those are the conditions that will determine that. If the land is flat, because the plant is so bushy, we normally say two by five or two by six. So two feet along the plant and then six feet between plants. If the beds are prepared, or say your tractor prepared the beds, then what generally happens is that by the time the beds are prepared, then they stand between the center of one bed and the other one is usually somewhere between five or six feet thereabouts. So that's a recommendation along it. We also say if you can trellis the plant, then do so. If you're going to leave it on the ground, we suggest that you put down um, your grass mulch so you can have more marketable fruit over the extended period. Okay. Wang Linton on YouTube. 
Yes. Is Delhi one of the hybrid expensive seed types? Can All right. We, can we get a ballpark figure of the price, please? All right. Excellent question. Very good. Approximately 4,800 seeds come in a pack. Somebody pull out them calculator for me, please. I'm going to break it down for... What's his name again? Wang Lington. Wang Lington. Um, so 4,800 seeds come in the pack. And we are having a ballpark figure of approximately $7,200 per pack. So tell me the cost for one seed. So $7,200 for the pack of seed. 4,800 seed come in the pack. Less than what? $1.50. $1.50. Well, is that affordable? I'm not sure. <laughs> Can you find $1.50 somewhere around the house? And then, not just that, you know, you're getting $1.50 per, per seed to cure that plant is another factor. But that plant will give you up to 30 pounds of marketable fruit. So consider. And then you work that factor as you go across. So yes, it's, it's, not, as, it's not expensive for what the returns will be. I've had farmers in the cheap days in the other day, which is not very far from here, I'm talking about last month, had the tomato in, 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 in spray like two times and then just leave it in the field. And that was it. Say too cheap to spray, too cheap to care. But when he went back to get tomatoes, I'm talking about taking up 5,000, 8,000, he would have had a total harvest from that acre, 35,000 pounds, under no care. His argument to me, and I quote, Mr. Parker, if I did get just $50, even 40 if I get $10 more upon the 20 we couldn't lose. Now, when you get a statement like that, it tells you about the quality genetics or the cost per seed. All right. So I'm going to give you two questions now, Parker. Sure. Is it a must that one have to grasp the plant? That's one. Mm -hmm. Second one, is it recommended to state the plant? All right. So there are two schools of thought here now the plant will grow and spread. If you're not going to take the plant up, then the argument is that those fruits, once it start to become larger, they will be resting on the soil. If they are resting on the soil, then what would naturally happen is that you have pinworm and other insects will damage those fruits. So even the soil becoming hot and cold can scorch those fruits, or you have um, fungal or bacterial infections affecting that fruit itself. So the grass is just a barrier between the two. If you can then afford to stake them vertically and to trellis accordingly, then either method work. But the key there and the argument is that you want to be protecting that fruit, which is the harvest, because that's where the money is going to come from. So either way, so if you, if you don't have to grass and you can stake and trellis accordingly, then I recommend to do so. Uh, much and Angel's Treasurer, what should I do if my tomatoes are small or too small? If they are, the fruit sizes are too small, then of course there are some factors at play now, whether it be nutrition or sufficient water. Um, check those two things. Your nutrition, be it foliar or granular or soluble, will play an important size. Remember I said to you earlier, in the fruiting stage, potassium, the last number on your fertilizer bag. The second and the last number is what becomes very critical. You want to have that second number because you want root, general, root to continue to be produced so as to pick up what you're going to be putting down. Good? So the last two numbers become very critical there. So in our Agasol 9, 18, 36, those two numbers, the 18 and the 36, is what is going to be helping to build those fruit sizes. If you can't do that, then you're 15, 5, 35. Or you can go with your Calmax B and your 45 and spray on so you can get the bulking up and the sizes accordingly. Any other? And I like the questions that are coming forward. Excellent questions. Tells me you're participating and you're viewing and you're listening carefully. Richard Gardner, what's the cost of the delivery variety and do you have the nutrition formula 
otherwise available? All right, so to answer the last part of the question first, yes, we do. We have a complete crop care guide. Again, once you reach out to us, we can share that. Um, if you have, I don't remember if it's your 2018 or 19 calendar, I do believe tomato crop care program is in one of those two calendars. So if you go to your local farm store, ask them for a calendar. Not sure if they'll have 18 and 19, but I'm certain that we can also link you to um, someone that has the, the information. Of course, we can share. Or we can share. Send us a WhatsApp. Or just send us a WhatsApp and we can, of course, reach out to you. Again, too, you can call us at the front desk or you, you can send us a WhatsApp number and we can share. And we can put you directly onto our agronomists that are in the field and in the know, I must say and that they are prepared to help accordingly. There's a question on Instagram, Brian Bennett. Yes. When do you stop using Nutrient Express? All right, Sir Bennett, Nutrient Express, the 44127. Um, that product can be used throughout the crop life. Now, once you get up to your first harvest, what you can now do is to alternate. You might be asking, alternate with what? You can now rotate your nutrient express with your sugar express. So what you're now doing is to help the plant to be generative, meaning you're putting out new blossoms and new leaves and to maintain. And you're also using your sugar express to bulk up those fruits so you are taking to market. So once you begin to harvest, you can rotate your nutrient and your sugar express on a weekly basis. Um, one last question, Parker. Yes, What's sir. the benefit of using AgChem's crop care program on your farm or crops? All right. Now that question is a university question. The benefit number one, we would have spent years dissecting, looking at the crop to see what works best when and how. We would have had tried, tested, and proven efficacy in terms of the formulations and the products that we are putting out. So one benefit, of course, is the experience that comes with it and the know-how. The other is the tail end, which is the added value in terms of your longevity of your harvest and also the quality of the harvest that you're going to be getting at the end result. That, of course, is, of course, the key benefit, and again, which is more money in your pocket in the long term. I hope that sufficiently answers. There are many other benefits. I mean, the, the experience that comes with the team and the teams that put these documents together and the know-how that goes beyond it and the testing back and forth is tremendous. So when you get it, it's something that has been well designed. Now, again, I want to thank you for your participation. Do join us again on Tuesday. That's immediately after Labor Day. Some people might be still on a break, not sure. Um, at our Zoom training session where Sian Spence from our St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland and parts of Hanover region, which is your eastern region, will be hosting a watermelon training session, which is on Zoom. So you can look out for the links to be shared and you can participate accordingly. And as I said to you on multiple occasions, you can, of course, tune in on Wednesday morning at 6.15 through 6.45 on our Farming Today feature, where we will, of course, be disseminating more information to you, our farmers, on a particular topic. And again, should you be in need of assistance on a local level, you can reach our various agronomists and uh, telesales representatives and uh, sales agronomists at the different regions. So in the Portland, St. Mary's, and St. Anne, it's Dennis Lecky. In St. Catherine and St. Andrew and St. Thomas, that's uh, John Oil Johnson. In the Hanover and St. James and Trelawney region, that's Dale Smith. And in Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth, that's Sion Spence. And yours truly in Clarendon and Manchester. And again, we have our in-store representatives at various farm stores, feel free to stop on by, ask your questions, and I'm sure you'll get the requisite response. Again, 
you can reach us at our various platforms. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share with your farmer friends. This, again, is another series in our Ag Camp Plant Live. Thank you for joining us, and have a good day.